So for those of you who don't know, I work at my church and that's my primary job at this point. Um, I just graduated high school and I'm still just working at my church on the side until I go off to college. Um, but this summer I worked on a really cool project that I want to share with you. I think it's something that's pretty unique and um, I'm excited to show you. So let's get started. Before this video begins, I do want to quickly mention that I'm now offering IT and network consulting. Um, I do a lot with Ubiquity, Free Radius, Proxmox, anything you can think of. It's all on my website, so go check it out, and I look forward to working with you. Essentially, um, as you probably know, or if you don't, um, churches have lyrics on the screen um, for the songs that like they're singing, and basically that is something that is pretty consistent. That's what the church is used to at this point. Um, but we are doing an outdoor service later this summer and I was like, I don't want to put screens out there, not out of laziness, but because it's a low cost event and we don't want to have to pay for screens, have to get cabling, computers, all that stuff outside. So I was like, I wonder if there's a better solution. And of course there is. So um, we use ProPresenter for lyrics and ProPresenter is a really cool lyric software. Um, it's pretty much Monopoly if you don't know. Um, essentially it is like the only one um, in the industry that's actually any good. So with that, I wanted some kind of way to stream the lyrics um, to people's phones or iPad or whatever. I wanted to do it um, at a device basis. Um, I wanted to be able to mass stream them out to a lot of people at the same time without relying on big, large screens. So um, I was like, I wonder if there's a way I can do this. Um, and I looked, I did some digging. ProPresenter has an API and I was able to harvest lyrics from there. So um, essentially, um, if I pull this up, um, there's literally a site you can go to now. So as you can see here on the iPad, there's literally a site you can go to um, that has a basically a reference of what ProPresenter sees. Um, that is all through a script that I wrote. And essentially, here's what we're doing. So I'll explain how it turned out in the end because I think that's the coolest part. Um, but um, for now, what we're doing is essentially, we have um, our ProPresenter computer. Um, we have a ProPresenter computer. We are then, um, actually, I guess it's kind of, yeah, it is kind of that direction. Um, then we have a PHP script. Um, I know a lot of people hate PHP. Um, it's kind of an older thing. I love it um, just because it's server-side. Um, I could do this through JavaScript, but I wanted everything to run server-side for this specific part, which you'll see why here in a second. Um, so we have ProPresenter, PHP script, uh, and then we have some kind of um, caching layer. Um, I guess the PHP script does some caching, but um, I'm going to separate this just for the purpose of the video. Uh, we have caching, and then we have a kind of, I don't want to say database, it's not a database, but there's a form of a storage, temporary storage database I'm using. I'm actually, I figured out how to do it in RAM, so we're kind of caching in RAM. Um, and then what we are doing is we are then displaying this. So there's a couple hops there. Um, essentially though, that is what the path is um, from ProPresenter to your phone. Now there is a whole bunch of server stuff in the middle, like this is spread out amongst a couple servers I believe. Um, and then after that, of course, we go to like, we go to Cloudflare, we go to all the hops there. But um, essentially at the most basic level, here's what I'm doing. Um, I'm taking ProPresenter and I'm using in basically a script that every 10 milliseconds will grab from the API because there's no way for ProPresenter to tell when there's an update. Very far, sorry, there's no way for ProPresenter to tell my script when there's an update. My script has to ask ProPresenter. So every 10 milliseconds, that script grabs it. And then after it grabs it, we are caching. Um, and the caching only happens if there's a change in the lyrics. Um, and this is an instantaneous thing. So this script actually will trigger this one, I should say, instead. I mean, that is completely instantaneous. There's probably maybe one or two milliseconds there, but um, it'll cache the lyrics, and it's only caching them if there's an update. It's not rewriting the cache if there's no update to the lyrics. So let's say the slide is the same. There's no new lyric on the screen. It's not going to cache it. Um, and then after that, we're going up to here. Um, and then this is saying, so if cache changes. So this is only running, this is displaying with JavaScript. That's only actually running if the cache is changed. Um, and that does instantaneously happen again. Like I said, this triggers that, that triggers that. So basically, um, for something to display with JavaScript, it's only changing if the cache changes. I um, mean, we're using something really, really cool. It's called WebSockets. Um, this is what basically any one of your chat apps is using. It's what a lot of websites use to stream low latency, quick data to the end user. Um, and actually, I can show you this. So um, let's pull this up on a computer. Okay, so you'll see on my screen right here, we've got the lyrics. So as I scroll through them, um, you'll see they do fade between them. They do go full screen. And actually I could even go full screen here if I wanted to. Uh, I did 
had, I had um, T3 chat generate me a full screen mode. I um, mean, it does work pretty well. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so if we go in here, um, if we go over to our network and then our WebSocket and then a uh, messages, you'll see as I scroll through these, we will get a whole new message every single time. So um, <clears throat> it, essentially it's just, it's popping up with a new JSON string um, every time there's a new message from the cache. So the first iteration of this website was like every 50 milliseconds, uh, the code would request from the pro presenter script individually. Um, but I realized that's not going to scale well, or if not at all, because we can't have 200, 300 people all hitting the pro presenter API at once. There's no way that's going to work. So I had to add, a, first of all, a layer of caching in there. Um, but second of all, I had to make sure that when I did switch to my WebSockets, which was my eventual goal, um, when I switched to WebSockets, I did not want to have um, essentially everything just spamming messages every 10 milliseconds to the server. I wanted the server to inform the client when there is a change. Um, and that's what I was able to do. So. Um, so that's really cool. That's essentially what we're doing. WebSockets is a really, really low latency way to do this. Um, and it's kind of interesting because I would have never thought I'd be doing this, um, but I'm really glad I am because it, I, well, I learned a lot about server stuff, um, WebSocket stuff. Um, WebSockets is actually not even running through Cloudflare. I found it's faster if I don't. My mind, um, as a IT person, my first instinct is, uh oh, pro presenter crashed, what do we do? Um, and there's so many, so many, so many ways we can add redundancy in this setup that it's really cool to me. So. First of all, per presenter. Let's say per presenter crashes. Uh-oh, well, typically what we can do is we can have a secondary um, per presenter instance. Now, obviously, in the terms of video routing, if you don't know anything about it, you can only have video from a projector plugged into one source. Um, we have ATEM video switchers, um, so we could theoretically virtually switch, um, and we do sometimes if per presenter does crash, so we can switch to a secondary source. But this is not a video feed. This is a text string feed. So how do we do this? Well, um, let's go back to our script that we wrote earlier. We have the script that harvests lyrics from ProPresenter. We can essentially have multiple scripts. Well, what else can we do? Well, we can go to multiple caching layers. So we can cache this multiple times. Well, that still doesn't help the situation. How do we fix this if something goes wrong? Well, in the script, I can have a few things. First of all, what we could do is we could, um, that's essentially, so basically this is just recreating the steps that we had earlier. Um, let's say we wanted to add redundancy. What could we do? Well, ProPresenter we have right here, you know, um, we could have an Nginx instance between here with a floating IP that essentially has the upstreams of both of these requesting at different times or load balancing, whatever we want. Um, Nginx, Nginx can basically sit between them, um, manage load balancing, manage redundancy, etc. Um, and that's kind of the first layer. Now, also, after all of our server side executions, all that stuff, we can have another layer of Nginx, which means we can essentially have this whole setup, and I, I'm actually going to copy this again because I think it's cool. We could essentially have this whole setup twice if we wanted to. Um, and then we can have Nginx load balance between all of these. So we can have four instances of purpose if we wanted to. And then beyond that, um, we have our display code. So essentially we could load balance between those as well, or um, we could do caching and stuff at that level. So point is with this kind of a setup, there's so many layers and so many opportunities for redundancy. ProPresenter actually does have a network link feature, so we could link these two together to essentially have them automatically stay in sync, um, which is really cool. Um, but so many ways we can add redundancy, um, and all of these ways also do support load balancing. So we can have um, really nice load balancing between this because if we're gonna have three, 400 clients, we wanna make sure the website scales really well. And this is something um, that I'm starting to learn is like, you can't really test this ahead of time. Now you, you could, but you can't test it with 400 people. I mean, it's really hard to get um, all those people to test something for you like that. So you have to test at a really small scale. Notice the CPU and stuff usage for really small amounts of people and then how, how does that scale up? So that's something I'm still learning, but I thought this was a pretty cool topic. Um, I kind of wanted to just show off what I did. Like I said, I think it's it's pretty neat, pretty unique. Um, and this is something that I've never seen anybody would do with ProPresenter before. Um, ProPresenter has like a, a iPhone app where you can stream lyrics on there and stuff, but that's like the actual slide. This is a text only stream. This is literally so fast. Um, and the biggest thing I want to cover in this video is how it's actually faster than the video system. So I'm going to put some reels up, some videos on the screen. Essentially though, what I do want to show you is this is so much faster than our ATEM switcher. So we have an ATEM constellation, um, 4ME HD, and um, we have a Decklink Duo card. So we have a few different hops there video wise coming from the Mac that runs the Lyrics. Um, but actually, the Lyrics solution that I made is noticeably quicker even with the fading than it is on Purpose Presenter. Um, and that's really cool. 
that's one of those things I'm really proud of because I was able to optimize it enough that it's faster than Purpose Center. Um, and it was faster-ish to begin with, although sometimes it was a little bit slower just because of the 50 milliseconds, you know, it might be at the tail end of the 50 milliseconds resulting in the slide looking delayed. Um, but with the 10 milliseconds maximum that I have right now, um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you want to look into this more, let me know. I can get the code out there probably um, at some point, but I just want to show you my cool little websites, my cool little websockets website. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you all in the next video.